Hi, my name is Vince. I'm here with Kate and Jordan, um, and we are part of the group Exploring Organic Processes in Geochemistry at Arizona State University. We're here to talk about geochemistry and explore the question of how similar is Tempe Town Lake to Yellowstone Hot Springs. Now, you may be wondering what geochemistry is. Geochemistry is the application of chemistry to geological processes, so we can figure out what's in this boulder, uh, and also why some hot springs smell like rotten eggs. Turns out the answer to that question is the presence of some sulfur compounds in the water. So using geochemistry, we can learn a lot about the world around us. Speaking about using geochemistry to understand the world around us, let's take this bottle of soda for example. So this bottle of soda, we can see that there are bubbles in it. And when I shake it, I can see that there are even more bubbles. And if I were to open it, it might even spray out. You may have wondered, why are there bubbles in my soda? And why does it spray if I shake it? Well, to understand that and answer those questions, we first have to understand that gases can dissolve in liquid. So it can be the bubbles in the soda, or oxygen dissolving into Tempe Town Lake, or our drinking water. And that's because the air that we breathe is in contact with the water, so that oxygen and gas can dissolve into the water. So when we shook the bottle, the dissolved gas clustered together, forming bubbles, and when we opened the bottle, we lowered the pressure, allowing the gas bubbles to more readily vaporize or spray out, rather than staying dissolved in the liquid. So this is how we get the bubbles in our soda and why it sprays out. Another difference we can measure is pH. pH is a measure of how acidic or basic a solution is. For example, lemonade is acidic and baking soda is basic. pH can be measured with a pH meter like this one. Drinking water is a pH of 7, so the pH can tell us if a water sample is safe to drink. Today we'll actually be taking some field measurements ourselves using Tempe Town Lake as an example. We'll be measuring both the pH as well as the dissolved oxygen. Let's get started! Today we will show you how we measure dissolved oxygen gas and pH in the field using Tempe Town Lake as an example. Let's start with the pH. To measure pH, we will simply place the diode into the lake. Then the meter will read the pH back to us. Now let's measure the dissolved oxygen gas. To do this, we will use what is called a spectrophotometer. Let's break down the word spectrophotometer so we can understand how it measures dissolved oxygen gas. Spectro stands for spectrum or spectra, while photo relates to light. So we are looking at a light spectra, while meter is a device for measuring. Therefore, we are using the spectrophotometer as a device to measure a light spectra. Here, we will take this small glass container called an ampule, and we will break it open into a sample of the lake water. The ampule will fill up with the lake water and react to turn bright blue. The spectrophotometer will detect the bright blue color's light spectra and use its intensity to determine the concentration of dissolved oxygen gas. However, when we ran the test for dissolved oxygen gas in our spectrophotometer, the device displayed three large plus signs, indicating that there is too much dissolved oxygen gas present for an accurate measurement to be recorded. I pulled out our handy dandy manual to see that the upper limit of this test is 15 milligrams per liter. This means there must be over 15 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen gas present in Tempe Town Lake. But just how does this compare to a hot spring? So, how do the values we measure compare to a hot spring? Well, the pH of Yellowstone Hot Springs actually spans from a pH of 1 to 10. So the pH we measured of Tempe Town Lake is actually well within the range of a Yellowstone Hot Spring. When we consider oxygen, we need to think about where the water in a hot spring has been. A prominent hypothesis is that Yellowstone Hot Spring water starts as snow in the mountains north of the park then percolates into the ground, gets heated by the Yellowstone volcano, reacts with rock, and returns to the surface over thousands of years. 
This means that water flowing out of a spring hasn't seen atmospheric oxygen in a long time, so we would expect to see much lower oxygen dissolved in fresh hot spring water compared to Tempe Town Lake. Now we're going to perform an experiment to demonstrate water-rock interaction. On the other side of the table, I've set up bottles filled with two different sizes of rock. One bottle is filled with common sand, which is essentially just very tiny rocks, while the other one is filled with larger pebble-sized rocks. I'm measuring out equal amounts of clean water, and then we're going to go over and pour the water in the bottles at the same time. As you can see, water flows faster through the pebble bottle and much slower through the bottle filled with sand. Each grain of sand has a much smaller surface area compared to each pebble-sized rock. However, there are millions of grains of sand in the first bottle compared to maybe a hundred individual pebbles in the second bottle. This means that overall, the pebble bottle has less surface area for the water to interact with and get slowed down by compared to the sand bottle. To save some time, let's jump to when water finally starts flowing out of the sand bottle. The water that flowed through the pebble bottle is relatively clear, whereas the water collected from the sand bottle has more of a brown color. One explanation for this is that water had more time to interact with the sand and was able to dissolve more chemicals in the process. Depending on the type of mineral water flows through, the temperature of reaction, and other factors, many different elements in a rock can be dissolved into water. Determining the flow path of water and what rocks the water flow through is an important part of geochemistry that can help you understand the history, composition, and safety of the water you are sampling. Well, I hope today that you learned a little bit about geochemistry. We learned that water can dissolve gases and that water reacts with different rocks, well, differently. This leads to some water being drinkable and then some water being a bubbling pot of acid and geochemistry tells us how that happens.